Good day, everyone. Today, we're going to discuss the mandate of the Office of the Tax Ombud. In terms of Section 16 of the Tax Administration Act, the mandate of the Tax Ombud is to review and address complaints uh, by taxpayers against SARS regarding a service or a procedural or administrative matter arising from the provisions of a tax act. In terms of section 16, subsection 1, subsection B, the Ombud may review at the request of the Minister of Finance or at the initiative of the tax Ombud with the Minister's approval any systemic or emerging issues relating to service matters, procedural matters, or administrative matters arising from the provisions of a tax act. When do we review a complaint? Uh, after exhausting the SARS internal process, it is important for taxpayers to understand that before the tax ombud reviews a complaint, tax payers must have given SARS the opportunity to correct their mistakes by, review, by lodging a complaint with the CMO. However, you can lodge a complaint with the Office of the Tax Ombud if there are compelling circumstances. And such compelling circumstances need to be advanced by the taxpayer and supported when submitting the complaint. The limitations on authority these are the complaints that the tax ombud may not review. The tax ombud may not review legislation or tax policy, SARS policy, a matter subject to objection and appeal, a decision uh, before the court. Resolution and recommendations made by the tax ombud in terms of section 20, subsection 2, of the Tax Administration Act, it states that the recommendation by the tax ombud are not binding on taxpayers or SARS, but if not accepted by SARS or the taxpayer, reasons for such must be provided to the tax ombud within 30 days of notification of the recommendations. And such information may be included in the report that goes to the Minister of Finance or SARS uh, Commissioner. We're now going to start with the internal process that the Office of the Tax Ombud follows when we review a complaint. The first step when we receive a complaint, we verify if the complaint is against SARS because our mandate says we review complaints against SARS. If the complaint is against SARS, then we check if the complaint relates to the application of a tax act. Or we also check if does the complaint refers to a service matter, administrative matter, or is a procedural issue. If we are satisfied, then we move to step number two, which is very important. We look if a taxpayer has exhausted the SARS internal um, uh, processes. And the first one is, have the taxpayer lodged a complaint with SARS Complaints Management Office, which is commonly known as the CMO, and if the time frame has lapsed? Because sometimes, uh, some taxpayers, they lodge a complaint with CMO, and at the same time, they lodge a complaint with the office of the tax ombud. <coughs> if that is the case, then we would reject such a complaint because SARS is still within the time frame. <coughs> if there are compelling circumstances that have been provided, uh, then the matter will move to step three. If there are no compelling circumstances for a taxpayer not to lodge a complaint with SARS CMO, we would reject such a complaint. Now, uh, section 18, subsection 4 and 5 uh, gives us a guidance of compelling issues. Compelling issues are a complaint has been identified by the tax ombud as a systemic issue. And 18.5b uh, refers to a matter 
referring to the taxpayer back to CMO uh, will cause undue hardship or referring the taxpayer back to CMO will not resolve an issue within reasonable time. Let me give you an example. We had a complaint uh, where a taxpayer had a job promise during the Olympics and she wanted a tax compliance certificate and unfortunately SARS did not provide him on time. And we said if we refer this taxpayer back to CMO, CMO has 15 days to review uh, our complaints. Uh, this person has, is more likely to lose the job because the flight would have left. So we then uh, accepted the complaint because it was compelling and very urgent. The next step that we look at when we receive a complaint is whether the complaint is, uh, has the limitations uh, of authority of the tax ombud, which is, is the taxpayer asking us to review legislation or a tax policy? If we say yes, then we reject the complaint and explain to the taxpayer why we are rejecting the complaint. Or we check if the taxpayer is asking us to review SARS practice generally prevailing or is the taxpayer asking us to review a matter that is subject to objection and appeal? And we know that such matters taxpayer need to object or lodge an objection and not complain at the office of the tax ombud. Um, we also check if the taxpayer is asking us to review a matter before the court. If an answer is yes to all this, this complaint will be rejected. But if the answer is no, then we will move to the next step of the review process, which is step number four, where we determine the facts of the complaint by considering the taxpayer side and SAR side. Does the taxpayer have a valid complaint against SARS? It is also important to note that the Office of the Tax Ombud has access to SAR systems that relates to tax matters. So we are able to determine if the facts provided by the taxpayer or provided by SARS are correct. We then determine the best way of facilitating resolution and refer matter to SARS. If there is no valid complaint, then we terminate it and inform the taxpayer why we are terminating the complaint. The last part is um, the kind of complaints that the Office of the Tax Ombud has dealt with. These are the complaints that uh, we have reviewed. Uh, most of the complaints uh, that we reviewed refers to delays in payments of refunds by SARS where stoppers are placed and there is no reason for such stoppers to be placed because um, SARS would have verified the information or the audit would have been complete and uh, the payment is just put, there's a stopper on the payment with no legal basis on it. Um, Non-adherence by SARS to dispute resolution timeframes where SARS is not adhering to the timelines um, and sometimes incorrectly invalidating objections instead of making a decision because the information would have been provided. SARS not making decisions with documents submitted, um, requesting the same documents over and over again and not making a decision on such. In some instances, uh, we dealt with uh, complaints that relate to incorrect allocation of payments that are made by taxpayers, by SARS, and SARS failure to respond to taxpayers' requests. For example, taxpayer would have applied for suspension of payments because they would have lost objections on, on the assessment. Some requests for compromise and they don't get responses and waiver of interest and penalties and SARS does not respond. Uh, refunds paid in incorrect bank accounts, uh, we have seen a few of those. Uh, payments where SARS pay taxpayers and recall the payments and they take very long to finalize such um, uh, verifications. Uh, profile hijacking is where taxpayers would uh, allege that um, submissions have been done by other people, not them, and their profiles have been hijacked. 
um, revision of assessments without reasons being provided to taxpayers, even when taxpayers have requested such reasons. Those are some of the complaints that we have received and dealt with, and also delays in issuing tax compliance certificates to taxpayers. The reasons for rejecting complaints uh, that are lodged by taxpayers, um, most of the time is complaints that are falling within the limitations of the tax ombud. Taxpayers who are not following the SARS complaints management process, which makes the bulk of the complaints that we reject. Lodging complaints um, with OTO prematurely, which means SARS is still within the time frames to finalize a process that the taxpayer is complaining about. Not adhering to SARS requests, for example, SARS would ask for specific documents and taxpayers would say, I have already submitted. But when the tax ombud checks, uh, the supporting documents available on the case is not the same as what SARS is asking. Taxpayers not updating banking details when they are asked to do so and their reasons uh, in most instances would be, I've been using this banking uh, account for the past 20 years, why must I update it? So we would reject it because SARS wants to verify that information. And some are not cooperative in general. Um, they would ask us for SARS to come and do a verification at their premises and they don't uh, open access to SARS. We would reject such if we receive such a report from SARS. Um, taxpayers noting appeals after 75 days from notice of disallowance or partial allowance and we would reject such as because SARS does not have a discretion after 75 days.